Hey guys, Pat from the Frog Depot here. Today we're going to do a video on bioactive enclosures. And I'm going to show you the important steps to making a bioactive enclosure. It's so easy once you grasp the concept. You literally can make almost anything bioactive for your animals as long as you're using these proper steps, layers, and of course isopods when we get to that section. Um, so basically I went out and raided our supplies, uh, our warehouse back there, and everything you see on this video here we do sell in-house. We can ship out to you at any time. I'm just going to be using a regular 10 gallon tank. Yes, this tank does have a crack that was fixed in the back, but we are totally green here. So I'm not getting rid of anything. I'm dropping stuff, um, but I'm not going to throw away a tank that we could use for non-water issues, uh, projects like this. So. Start off, your first very important layer is your drainage layer. So I love the sponge rock drainage layer. It's ridiculously light. And keep in mind, you're going to want to move these enclosures around. Um, there are other products like hydro balls and things like that, but they're very heavy. They're basically balls made of clay. Um, they do the same thing, but they're literally four to five times the weight. So I love this sponge rock. Um, it's really lightweight. It has a lot of pores in it, which is great for your microbial growth in that layer, keeping it nice and healthy. So that's your first layer. So you just dump your bag on in there, and depends what size tank you're using. You know, I like to have a nice one to two inch layer. Like that's, I always say like one bag, which is a gallon bag um, for every 10 gallons of, of tank you're using. Um, you certainly could go a little bit deeper than that, but to me for the uses of here for our dart frog pairs or uh, grow out tanks is sufficient. So, second layer that most people forget about, and it happens to be the cheapest and very important layer, is your drainage mesh. So this is what's going to stop um, your layers from combining together. So basically, this is an 18 by 18. Um, I didn't have a 10 gallon cutout, but it doesn't really matter because you could fold this over and basically you're going to put this on top of your drainage mesh. So now you have a nice barrier and that's going to stick up till we put the next next uh, layer on so the next layer is you know there's so many different names but ABG there's rainforest mix um, there's uh, you know I mean so many different mixes on the market today um, we're developing one as well but the basic components um, kind of stay the same uh, but I will tell you if you want to make your own at home it's not the easiest thing in the world because you got to buy a lot of the different um, products that are in here like tree fern fiber, charcoal, sphagnum, peat, um, orchid bark, and it gets expensive and honestly it's just a lot cheaper as a smaller consumer to just buy this by the gallon that's pre-made from like a company like us or, or anybody else. So this layer I like a little bit thicker because I like to do live plants so basically we're going to dump this in there and shush it in the corners and I got this is basically a gallon in each one of these so this is two bags of the rainforest mix and I'm going to shush this around to kind of make this even I like to use simplistic plants great terrarium plants you have your this is a pothos variety and this is another really common, sorry, I'm trying to take them out of the water. You know, they, they stay at the perfect height for your tank. You don't want anything that's going to get bigger than the enclosure you're putting in. Now, you are, you're going to have to prune this. That's the maintenance. So, basically, what I like to do, see how that just came right out of there? I'm going to use a li as little amount of the greenhouse dirt as I can. I like to give the plants a nice cleaning off at the end. It helps hydrate and also get any 
fertilizers or pesticides that the greenhouses might have used. And I'm a really big fan of putting these plants in the corners, but you certainly can design it any way you want. Because um, as pothos is going to kind of grow out, these guys are going to grow straight up. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Yeah, see, I want to show you this. So, see these little green balls right here? This is extremely common for certain greenhouses. And what those are, these are time-released or water-released fertilizers. So that's why I rinse them off. I don't want anything possibly harmful going into the tank with the frogs or isopods. out of the way. So at this point we got our layer of drainage, we got our mesh which is separating it, and then we have our rain porous floor, ABG, um, Ceratostrat, whatever you want to call it, whatever whatever uh, product you like. Um, you'll see that this is one that we've done that we keep uh, grow outs in after time, it will get these nice layers and kind of sink down as the water's going through the layers. So, <clears throat> at this point, this tank is not bioactive yet. So, what we've done is we made the layers, but we got to put in the important part. So, springtails. Very, very, very important to this whole deal. You want to take a nice booming culture. And this one is definitely booming, and I literally just pulled this right off the shelf to what we would ship to you guys. So, this nice booming culture of springtails. Make a tiny little hole in the middle. And I put that, that uh, cake right in the middle. At this point, I like to just give a rinse to anybody who might be uh, clinging in there. In the culture. All right, so we got our springtails. We're almost there. It's almost bioactive. So isopods. Um, the two variants I have up here are Orange Lavis and Montenegro. Um, Orange Lavis is not a type that is, in my opinion, great for frogs. Um, they're a very ferocious eater and hunter. They have a just an appetite that seems to never want to end. So they're not one that I like to use in frogs in case they might try and nip your frogs. Um, so we're going to put the Montenegros in, the clown isopods. Um, they're pretty expensive, so most people like to keep these guys as pets, but it's what I have available. They're great cleaners. Uh, they're just a little bit more expensive than things like scabers or powder oranges or powder whites, uh, all that stuff you can find on our site. You want to put a nice culture in there. I always like to put two, because it's not like you could have too many cleaner, cleaner bugs in there. So at this point, we have our springtails in there, we have our isopods. I'm going to give this layer a really nice wet down. Give it a, give it a good soak. They're all starting to disperse here already. All right, so our layer is soaked. Now. I have done this part for ever since we started making dart frog tanks over 10 years ago and I just personally like to have a great layer of sphagnum moss around it uh, and you, you just want this really nice high quality long long uh, strand this is New Zealand blonde sphagnum I like to kinda spread this on this layer especially around the plants it's great at holding up the humidity. And I, I just think it looks really nice, to be honest with you. And it's going to further protect your bioactive layer. So I like to put a little bit on each side here. 
through the middle. And I find that it really makes the tank last longer. That few bucks that I, I spent, we're going to water it down at the end anyways, um, really helps. So now I got this nice buffer layer. It's going to help hold humidity with that dirt. It has your, your springtails and isopods are making their home under there right now. But it's not quite done. Because the most important part to any bioactive is your uh, biodegradables. And that's what people talk about biodegradables. It's things like your magnolia leaves, your live oak leaves, your, uh, your magnolia pods. And these are going to serve as a couple different jobs in your tank. One, I think they look nice, to be honest with you. Really nice, high quality leaves really bring the tank looking more like a rainforest. Uh, but it's also going to protect those, those isopods and those springtails. And in addition to that, they love to eat these. It's a food source for all your bioactive bugs as they start degrading. And you'll say, Pat, well, aren't they supposed to eat the, you know, the bad stuff in the tank, the poop and the bacteria and stuff? And yeah, they absolutely are going to do that too. But hey, if you ate cheeseburgers every day, you would get tired of cheeseburgers too. So I like giving them a nice leaf layer. Every tank gets a leaf layer. What type of leaf you use doesn't really matter. Um, what does matter is that you didn't just go in your backyard and grab leaves to put in your tank because those leaves can carry chytrid and rana from outside animals. They could carry harmful and different bacteria and fungi that your animals normally wouldn't be used to in the biome that they're at and they can't handle it. So if you're not going to go through the process of actually sterilizing these leaves and drying them, and let me tell you, it's a process. Um, it's cheaper, again, to just buy a bag of already ready-to-go sterilized. So to finish off these tanks, just for looks, I mean, I love cork. Cork flat, cork tubes, they make anything look fantastic. I always like to put one, I get the base of the plants here. Like I said, just what I've always done. And there is no dart frog tank or any or any dart frog tank in the world that wouldn't be complete without a coconut hide. So I could put that right in the middle. We'll actually, if we put a pair of darts in here, we'll give them two just to be safe. So at this point, you have a complete system in here. You have your drainage layer, which is going to collect all the those drains, all, all the water that comes on through. You have your rainforest mix. I put a nice little buffer of sphagnum moss and, of course, the leaves. And your bioactiveness is coming from your springtails and your isopods. And, and your plants are just, oh, they're going to bring this whole thing full circle. So that's why I always like to have one or two uh, plants in here. And what I will do at the end is simply, once again, give everything a nice spray. Just to make everything nice and wet. Now you can see here that even though I've, I've added a lot of water and I've sprayed this pretty good, this is bone dry. You can see here that the water is just starting to seep on down. So, you know, you're going to have to spray this once or twice a day for a couple days to really get it to where it needs to be. So I like to leave these bioactive tanks go for a week or two. Let them kind of equal out. Don't worry about the the bugs eating, you got your leaves there for that. And eventually it's going to look like this tank over here where it's now even. So you got your final product. The only thing that's missing is a lid. And that really depends what species you're gonna put in there or how much humidity you need. Dart frog species, we're gonna put a glass lid on here. Um, some species we're gonna go half glass and half open. So the lid I leave up to you. So hopefully this helped you. Um, and basically this whole tank was done bioactively for way under a hundred bucks. If you're going somewhere and spending two, three, four hundred dollars to do a bioactive tank, you might want to shop around because it simply should not be that expensive to do that. Here we have, we got five dollars in the drainage layer. We have uh, twenty dollars in the rainforest mix, which is going to be your pretty much your most costly. Um, we have five dollars in sphagnum moss, so right there at thirty bucks. We have six dollars in cork, thirty-six bucks. Two plants at six each. We're at forty-eight, 
six dollars in leaves we're at 48 plus six 54 uh, and of course the isopods and springtails were at 64 plus another 15 so we're at 79 dollars 79 dollars boom if, to do this tank uh, that's bioactive ready to go just needs a lid so hope this helped you out guys that you can do bioactive on a budget uh, and it still looks really great especially when these plants are going to grow on and if you want to put a nice grow light it'll help so if you like what you're seeing hit that subscribe button guys it really helps us out hit the like button throw us some comments uh, uh, what you like what you see or what you want to see going forward so we'll talk to you guys soon take care